keep everything that you want to keep safe. It's where you store your excess, actually. A silo is where, it's where the harvest grows. That's where a silo is. It's, it's a granary, it's a warehouse. It's, we would call it in our modern times, we would call it a barn. Well, you're saying those barns, prepare for your barns to catch fire. Prepare for your barns to catch fire. God says that there's, an, there's going to be an economic nuke here in the United States. An economic nuke that is going to be loosed, released here in the United States. Things that people are saving up for. Something called annuity. An annuity, whatever that is. He says they're going to collapse. Investments are going to fail. People are going to be... People are going to be so financially bankrupted, so financially strapped. I mean nothing, having nothing, having, having next to nothing. And this is coming from a platform of incredible wealth. This is, this is a platform where you want for nothing. This is a platform where you lack nothing. And you're going to come down, he says, to having next to nothing. So imagine the people who have nothing now. What, is the, what will we call the level where they are going to fall? What will we call the level where people who are in the middle class fall to if the very wealthy, those who have a lot of money, are going to fall down to the point called next to nothing? Then, then what will happen to those who already have just a little? It's going to be very tough in this country. I'm telling you there's going to be famine in America. A famine, the Lord says, of bread, a famine of grain, even of human comfort. Even to hear a kind word from someone, even to hear someone just say it will be all right, people will be so insular. People will be so wrapped up in their own personal suffering. People will do, woe is me. Woe is me. A great cry, a great lament. It will be that kind of thing. Because God, God is saying that people trust, God is saying that people trust their money too much here. He says wealth is the stronghold and the bastion of the United States. Wealth is the stronghold and the bastion of the United States. They put their trust in wealth. They put their trust in money. They put their expectations in their own strength and what they can earn. A bastion is, is a place that, it's, it's, it's a fortress. A bastion is a fortress. It's a fortification. It's something that you raise up that nobody is supposed to be able to breach. And for instance, that's why people are so, so much encouraged to put their money into localized pockets to hedge against the future. Put your money in gold, put your money in silver, put your money in this type of coin or that type of cryptocurrency. That is why that, that voice that tells you to trust in money Nobody tells people in this country to trust in God. It's such, it's such a deception. Nobody tells people. The money says in God we trust. Which God are you trusting in? Which God are you trusting in? Is it that sentence on the back of the money that you put your faith in? Nobody encourages people to learn how to put their faith in a place that the word of God says. That moth, rust, it cannot destroy when you store up in those heavenly places. Put your wealth in places where moth and rust, moth and rust does not destroy. No one encourages people to put their faith in places with true wealth, which is faith, which is trust in God. People don't trust in God. They, there's a strong, strong push. If you're a wise man, then you would put your money here and here. If you're a wise man, then you're going to be with a brokerage firm. You're going to be with an investor. You're going to have a hedge guy. You're going to have a finance guy. You're going to have someone to, you know what? You need someone to stand for you in the day of adversity. If you don't know how to day trade, if you don't know how to do stocks, you need one of these guys to do that for you. That's your portfolio. That's your wealth. That's your safety. That's what is said. That is where people put their trust. God is going to allow that thing. I'm telling you, it will be, it will be just like something that dissolves something else. I'm just seeing something pouring 
even on metal. I'm seeing something pouring even on wood and it just dissolves. I don't know why I keep thinking of lime. Maybe there's a kind of lime, lime powder or lime that dissolves things, but I'm just thinking of lime that you put it on something and the metal just begins to melt. It just begins to corrode. It just begins to, to just eat up and it has no strength left. God says there will be absolutely no integrity in the U.S. economy. No one will put their faith in the U.S. dollar. God says the U.S. dollar is going to be eclipsed by another currency. The U.S. dollar is going to be eclipsed by another currency. The U.S. dollar is going to be eclipsed by a whole different economy. America is going to fall back. America is going to fall. God says you will come to the bottom of the rankings. You will fall so far that you will not even be considered among those who are being ranked. You will not be counted. It's as if you go to a track meet and to even be allowed to run, you need to be first allowed to qualify. You need to be allowed to qualify before you can run. So if you don't even meet the qualification criteria, if you're not even running between this time and that time, you won't even be uh, among those who are ranked top 10, top nine, who are then going to move on to the actual competition. America is going to fall off completely. Just lose your grip as if you're climbing a ladder, you're just going to lose your grip. And then with a shocked expression, a shocked expression, you're just going to fall backwards. I just see the person as if there's electricity in the ladder. It will be a shock. God says it will be a shock, an economic shock, a fiscal shock. I'm telling you, there's going to be something like an electric shock that will be applied to the American economy. And when that shock, which will take place in the form of an event. This is not going to be something that will take place gradually. God says, I'm not going to give you any time to scramble and make an escape route. I'm not going to give you any time to scramble and make a backup plan. I'm not going to allow you to have a backup plan. I'm not going to allow you to pull out plan B because this is why you do not listen when I speak to you. You always think that you can hedge against me. You think that you can make a plan that is greater than what I say. You always think, you always think there's going to be more time. You think that obedience is not immediate. You think that obedience is when you're ready. You actually think that obedience is on your schedule but you don't understand that there's only one clock operating in the earth today and it's my clock. It's not your clock. God says we're not having a meeting. At a meeting, everyone is allowed to speak. Everyone has an idea. Everyone is allowed to contribute. Everyone is allowed to have a say. Even the bad ideas, you're allowed to have a bad idea because human beings like to troubleshoot their ideas and see if they can make them watertight, ship shape. If we can actually hammer out all the kinks and all the dents and see if we can get something that will work. God says, you're not even going to know what's happening. I'm telling you, you're waking up in the morning and you're going to find that every, whatever you worked for, it's gone. It's gone. It's X'd out, X'd out, X, just X'd out. An entire portion of the American economy X'd out gone. The bottom will just drop out. It will just drop out. That thing that you think is so valuable now, you think it is so valuable now, and you don't know that you're holding a dud. A dud. A chicken egg, when you crack it, it's not, it's not healthy. It's not fit to fry. It's all black and it's all dead inside. A total dud. An egg that will not hatch. The embryo inside is already dead. It's going to be a sudden shock. I see people just sitting up in the morning, sitting up in the morning, first habit, no prayer, no nothing. You just take the remote, remote, you're still in bed, you click it and the TV comes on and the TV begins to give you your prayers for the day. Just in, markets this and markets that. God says you're going to wake up one day, you're going to do exactly what you have always done. And you're going to find that the ark is setting sail. You're going to find that the rain has come. The rain you said would never come. The rain you said, you said that the American economy was undefeated. You said iron cast. That is what I'm hearing. You said it was cast iron. 
knock, 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 rock solid. That is what you said. You will find out that it's actually an empty and dead and hollow tree. There's nothing on the inside of it. Economic tsunami. God says we'll wash an entire portion of the U.S. economy away. And people are just going to be caught in the wind. The bank will close. They will tell you, unfortunately, at this time. Get prepared to hear that saying everywhere. Unfortunately, at this time. Unfortunately, at this time, we are unable to offer ATM services. This is, the, this is what happened in, in Nigeria. This is what happened in Nigeria. This is exactly what happened to them. The Lord gave a warning about their economy in 2022. The Lord gave them a warning that they were going to suffer economic hardship, economic impact. The Lord warned Nigeria that they were going to have a rogue government. A rogue government, what does the word rogue mean? It obviously means someone who breaks from the script. A rogue is a thief. A rogue is someone who follows his own program. A rogue is someone who follows his own way. The Lord warned in, in March of 2022 that Nigeria was going to suffer a hard impact to the economy. They were going to suffer a rogue government. This is a government that nobody wants. This is a government that's going to do its own thing. And surely as the Lord lived, because his word is true, that word came to pass. Those people woke up and they were given an unbelievable short period of time to get used to currency turnover and they're still suffering from the impact of that they're still suffering from the impact of that over a year later and that's what's going to happen hard impact to cash unavailable cash we have so much cash in this country people have money stacked up at their house People have money stacked up at their house because they don't trust the government and they don't trust the bank. But what's, what, what's going to happen when the government directly impacts cash use in this country? What do you think will happen? What will happen when you can have all the money you have stacked up at home and you wake up to an announcement one day that tells you that physical notes, physical bank notes are no longer an acceptable tender in the United States due to, for instance, counterfeiting what happens to a sudden announcement that says money is useless money is fake money is dangerous money can be easily imitated therefore to protect the citizenry of the United States cash is no longer an option ATMs go away the need for physical money goes away and everything you have at home you will be either given an opportunity to hand it over like Nigeria did or it will become useless in your hands. God says what has been before will be again. And anyone who was alive in 2016 knows that this is what happened also to India. This happened to India. They woke up one morning and the government told them, oh, we're fighting terrorism. We're fighting terrorism. The terrorists are not paying taxes. That's what the Indian population was told. Terrorists, we've just noticed now that the terrorists are not paying taxes. Therefore, in 24 hours, in 48 hours, some unbelievable, insane amount of time like that, they were told that all the rupees that they had would no longer be legal tender. Their money was about to rot in their hands. And they were all forced to rush to the bank and deposit their money the new world order follows this same playbook again and again. The Holy Spirit is telling me, make them know there is nothing new under the sun. To those who have lived long enough and paid attention long enough, the same patterns are used to destroy the nations. And this pattern is finally, God says it's finally coming full circle. Finally coming full circle because America does not obey the will of God. America will not submit herself to the word of God. America, you are not humble. You, you refuse. You absolutely obstinately refuse to bow your knee. I have, oh my. Because you will not humble yourself. God says you will be humbled. You will be brought low. Oh Babylon, you will be brought low. You will be humbled 
into and down to the dust. All money gone. Free enterprise gone. No more right to do business as a private entrepreneur. Parastatals. Parastatals. Government-owned companies. Government-owned businesses. State-owned businesses. State activism. Rulership from the top. Dictation. The government talks, you listen. No more input. No more, in Europe they call it the ombudsman, I think. Or the, it's a, it's a gathering. Yes, it's called the ombudsman, something like that. It's a gathering whereby they get together and they have referendums. They get together and they think about how they're going to do things. They get together and, and even small interest groups that would not be able even small interest groups that would not be able to really have a voice if they were to stand on their own in this amalgamated form of voting, even small and underrepresented parties that have very few members get to have a vote. They get to have a vote. They get to, they get to say something. It won't be like that. It won't be commonality of thought. It won't be commonality of interaction. It won't be commonality of we are this interest group, we are LGBTQ, or we represent the disabled people, or we are the workers' union. It won't be like that. Because that represents individualism. The individual is coming to the end of his and her life. The concept of being an individual, the concept that I am an original, the concept that I am different, the concept that I am a creative expression, an outward expression, that I am myself. And for Christians, it's even more different than that. We are the creative expression of the Lord God himself. He lives in us and he expresses differently through each one of us, but it will not be like that. We will all be compelled to conform. It will be a society where you will have to conform on the outside and you can be as original as you want on the inside for a season in your heart. But God says that even that originality on the inside, if they perceive it, they will attempt to grind it out of you. They will attempt to monitor it out of you. They will attempt to shame it out of you. They will attempt to pressure it out of you. And if it still doesn't come out, if you refuse to let go of that internal core, then they will remove you from the society, absolutely. Expulsion. Expulsion to go and live in conditions that no human being will want to live in. Expulsion from where food is available, of expulsion from where water is available, expulsion from where things are easily accessible, into a life of struggle, into a life of struggle. And God says you are not prepared to make that transition. I hear him so clearly. You are not prepared to make that transition. You are not prepared to suffer for my sake. You're not prepared to suffer for my sake. This is what the Lord says. You're not prepared to lay it all down if you are required to. You're not prepared to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. You're, you're not prepared to do that. You're not willing to do that. You, you don't have the heart that goes that deep. To say like Esther, if I perish, I perish. You don't have the heart to go that deep. It's a superficial love. It's a superficial relationship. It's Christianity of what can God do for me until a test arises. True test is what reveals the Christian. And I'm already seeing, what I'm seeing is huge, massive fire and Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego standing inside that fire, so humble, their outer robes removed from them. Their outer robes removed from them and they are just standing in simple, humble, linen, linen inner garments. That's all they're standing in. But the fire is not consuming them. The fire is not eating them up. 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had already made their decision before they even, before they even sentenced them to the fire. They made their decision and they told the king, of course we have a God. Of course we have a God. We don't refuse not to bow to be disrespectful to you, king. We are a people of a different breed. We are a people of a different following. Of course we have a God. And of course our God can deliver us from you, O king. But even if he does not, that is the signal that someone has made the decision. I'm, God is ready to test the church. God is ready for a great and eternal separation. When that separation occurs, you will never go back to the other side. It's either you're coming out of perdition, you're coming out of the road that leads to death forever and never turning back. I've spoken of this before. It will be as if the ground is tearing and you don't know where it's going to tear. You're standing with your husband and your children and all of a sudden a great crack appears between you and your husband and suddenly it's your husband and your daughter on one side and you and your five-year-old son on the other side and the ground begins to crack and separate just the way it does in these action movies who can when the earth begins to split who can fold it back together again that's what god is asking when an earthquake splits the ground who can make them come together again in the same way as no man can sew the earth back together again when families begin to crack and separate, Jesus Christ says, for my sake in the home, who cannot abide my name versus who loves my name and he does not love his life even unto the death. He says, I didn't come with peace. I'm coming with a sword. I'm going to set fathers against their own children and mothers against their own flesh. And houses will be separated for my sake. Houses will be separated for my sake. Christians think it's just arguments now. You think that the reason they hate you in the house is because they just don't understand. It's because they, they have another spirit in them. They have the spirit of the God of this world in them. They have the spirit of lawlessness. They have iniquity at work in them. And it's working darkness in them. It's working a great confusion in them. And that's the reason you can't reach them. You cannot make the earth to unsplit itself. The differences you're seeing, the tearing you're seeing, irreconcilable differences. This is a phrase that we use for divorce here on earth. Irreconcilable differences mean we can't come back together again. I see no path back to you. A finality that will cause millions to depart to the church of Jesus Christ. Once the suffering begins, millions will abandon their confession of faith, which God is saying it was no confession at all. They went out from among us because they were not of us. Imagine. It literally means the reason they left is because they were never part of us in the first place. The church is millions strong around the world right now. Could fool anyone except you have a good eye. A nesting evil. This is what he's saying. A nesting evil in your midst. Pretenders to the cross. Pretending to follow Jesus. Pretending to have the born again experience. Utterly unchanged. Hearts as hard as rock cannot receive the truth that would have saved them. They will perish because they loved the lie and they rejected the truth that could have saved them. And for this cause, the Lord will allow them to come under the powerful control of a strong delusion. A leader more charismatic than any you've ever seen. A world leader. A man surrounded by global fanfare, beloved of millions. He can do no wrong in your eyes because your eyes are already dark. You think that you have light, but you have darkness in you. And if you think that the light in you, if you think that the darkness in you is light, then who can save you? Who can help you? A global leader, smiling and charismatic, beloved of men. He can do no wrong. In every place he will be welcome. They will roll out the red carpet for this man. They will roll out the red carpet 
the Holy Spirit is saying no expense will be spared when he's coming to your country, when you see the preparations, you will wonder if the Lord himself is coming. When he's coming to visit a nation, when you see, it will be like Christ at, it will be like Christ when he came for the Passover. The way they welcomed him, the kind of fanfare, the kind of love, the kind of celebrations. God says that mankind will wrap themselves around the beast. They will embrace the new policies. You will hear people arguing as apologists for the beast system. The Lord says the rise of the system that will destroy human flesh. People will argue for it as if they have MBAs and they've written thesis in, in how to build a society that works. When you hear them explaining that the curfew is good. They will say to you that the curfew is good because it prevents crime. And after you listen to the announcement for six weeks, someone in the house will complain. I feel so frustrated because at 8 PM is when I used to like to take my evening jog and you will hear the mouth of someone in the house open and say, but the curfew is good because it prevents crime. If you go running at 8, 10 PM, you could get murdered. The curfew is there for your protection. You will argue for your own cages and your own bar, your own bars, your prison walls. They will erect prison walls against you. And then you will say that the prison walls are good because they keep the enemy out. The enemy is within. The enemy is with you. The enemy is with you. It is your brother with you. They dwell in the midst with you. But when they erect the prisons, when they create the cages, you will say the cages are visionary. You will say the, the, the cages are foresight. Because who knows what could happen if there are no cages. Cages keep birds safe. You will hear this coming out of people's mouths and you will wonder if you ever knew freedom. You will forget what freedom feels like. The Lord says that even though he said that for the sake of the elect, he will shorten the time, that time period that we are going to live in, you will feel as if a day is equal to a year. You will feel one day that you live in the beast system. You that have a heart for Jesus Christ, you that loves righteousness, you that wants to be holy, you that wants to be set apart, you that does not want to partake in evil, you that does not want to take strange tablets that will regulate your emotions. You don't want to take medication that's going to change who you are. Watch them swallowing it. Just watch them swallowing it. Just watch them in the, in the prison system and in the hospital system and in any place where they check you in against your will, like a mental clinic, a mental hospital. I'm seeing you're in a gown or you're in a prison outfit. And when they tell you, take these pills, they watch you. They give you the pills in these little small white cups and then they watch you and you have to take it. You have to take pills in the nursing home. The nurse will watch you until you take it. And now they're smart. They'll even ask you to please open your mouth and to lift your tongue because they want to be sure that you're not keeping back the pills. People will take medication to, to regulate their mood so that people are not violent. People will be doped up. People will be on dopamine rushes. People will be on dopamine highs. People will be in this mood, mellow mood, just like jazz music. I just see them swaying like, hmm, 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 hmm. Just a chemically manufactured fog of peace. People will live in a chemically manufactured fog of peace. Everything's okay. Why are you upset? They're doing this for us. They're doing all this for us. It will feel like living with insane people. And this is where God's wisdom will be very much needed, but they're not many wise in this generation. This is a generation of fools that don't value their life. They don't value life at all. They don't value the lives of others and they don't value their own lives. They think God says, you think that you can save your own life. He says, you think that you can save yourself. You think you have what it takes. You think the beast system will be de defeated by ammunition. You do. You do. You think the beast system will be defeated by machismo. You think it will be defeated by belligerence. This is complaining. This is, we're not going to take it. This is, I've got my, my, my pew pew. This is, this is, let them try it. 
I've got my boots on. I've got, I've got 10, 15 years of army training. I'm a combat veteran. Let them try. God says you will lay in the street and you will bleed out from so many bullets because you will not know that they had every sniper in the neighborhood on your house because you were already on the list. You were already on the list. Before we started this prayer, the Lord was telling me, my daughter, the free era will come to an end. The free era is when you can preach. The free era is when you can warn them. Lift up your voice like a trumpet, celestial, during the free era. Because the free era is when you can sit down and speak to them. It's when you can visit them. It's when you can talk to them. It's when you can pray for them. At the end of the free era, it will be a different story. And as he was talking to me, before I came and sat down here, as he was talking to me, I was seeing that there will be a raid on the homes of pastors. People honestly think, and this is a pity, people honestly think that when the horn of the beast rises against the church, they honestly think that because they know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe on him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Because people know that God so loved us, who would come to salvation, who would accept the cross, they truly believe that God is going to intervene in what is overall his own plan. People act as if God wrote half of the Bible and then the other half was written by the U.S. government or the other half was written by, by some other entity. They act as if the whole of the Bible, including the rise of this system, to destroy God's own people. They act as if someone else wrote the words of Revelation 13 that says that it was given him power. People act like they never sat for a moment to ask themselves, who, who allowed the beast to rise up against every tribe and every tongue and including the holy people. It's written right there in Revelation 13 that he rose up against the holy people and he prevailed over them. That means he defeated them. They act as if God is ignorant of that, not knowing that God is able to weave threads of suffering. God is able to, to weave threads of what looks like a defeat into something that will be an overall victory. We don't meditate on these verses enough. What I saw is that the government went out and started arresting pastors and not a single pastor had a dream. Many of the people I saw, they were older men who are still standing on the wall. I didn't see them going after these useless skinny jeans one, ones. The, why would the enemy go after those who promote a false gospel? People act like Satan is a fool. Satan is no fool. Satan knows who is a true Christian and who is no threat. There is no need to harm a false pastor. In fact, you can win him over to do your deeds and your works. What I saw is that they went after men who have refused to compromise their faith. Ministries that have never taken money. Ministries that have never taken money to, to compromise their ministry, to compromise their message. Ministries that because their hands were clean before God, they continue to preach against abortion. They continue to preach against homosexuality. They came for those people in their beds. I was watching men older than myself. I was watching men that have started to get the white streaks at the side of their head. They literally came into those people's houses. I don't know how they did it without making noise. And I saw that the first thing the pastor knew about them catching him was that men, men grabbed him under the armpits. That's how people were being woken up in their beds. Their doors were being kicked in or somehow those men would enter the houses so silently. And the first the pastor knew that he was about to become a marcher is that they had him under the two armpits and they were yanking the covers off him and they were telling him, you have been arrested for sedition. You have been arrested for crimes against the government. You have been arrested for the spreading of false doctrine. This word of God will be called absolutely false doctrine. We will be told that Jesus was a mythological um, figure. He was a historical figure whose, please listen, we will be told that Jesus Christ was a mythological confusion. To some, they will say he never existed. He was a figment of the imagination. But when, if there is protest, when there is protest that Jesus was real and people become apologists and people will do this because I'm telling you the B system is a time where wisdom is at a premium. 
Wisdom is available now. She's crawling out in the street. She's standing by the highways. She's saying, come into me. You who love length of days, you want a long life, go and come, come into me. Come into my house. Don't eat in the house of the mocker. Don't eat in the house of the scoffer. Don't walk in the advice and the ways of the ungodly. Come to me, wisdom. But people have too many choices in these end times. And so they will not come to wisdom in the end times, the true end times. Where now we will be required, we will be required to prove our faith in Jesus Christ with blood. This covenant started with blood. It's going to be watered with the end time blood of the marchers. Wisdom is lacking. When they start to say that Jesus is not real, people will not know the dangerous times that we're in. People will not know as they do not know now even though they are being warned. People will not know that everything in the end times is a trap. People will not know that their own grandma will strike up a conversation in the midst of the house just to hear who says what about that topic. You've known her all your life. She's your mother's mother. But the serpent is inside her and the serpent was more subtle S-U-B-T-I-L, which means crafty, deceptive, dangerous. The serpent was more subtle than all the animals in the garden. The spirit of Satan himself will be inside people. And grandma will strike up what sounds like an innocent conversation around the dinner table. And you don't know that she works for the new world order. And she has offered herself to be an accomplice to the destruction of her own family because the fires of hatred against the name of Jesus Christ are burning in her. A simple conversation, you that can't keep quiet, you who thinks that the sun rises and sets on your opinion. The word of God says that a man's enemies will be those of his own household. Millions will be taken away because they don't have a lock on their tongue. They don't have self-control. They cannot bridle their vessel. They will speak at the wrong time and they will be shocked to find out who is an informant. When they attack the name of Jesus, many Christians will stand up and well they should, and well they should. But the government will use that as an excuse. God is saying it's a pretext. It is a pretext. They will attack his name. They will attack his lordship. If you think that's all that is, you think it's only Islam that does it? You think it's only Islam that says he is not God. He is merely a prophet. Peace be upon him. It's going to be the official state line. The person named Jesus Christ never existed. He is a figment of your imagination. No one should pray in that name. No one should raise up that name. No one should teach in that name. How can you expand the kingdom of God if you do not preach in the name of Jesus Christ? How can you expand the kingdom of God? How can you win souls? Upon whom shall men believe? There is no other name to believe upon. No matter the 10 million different opinions, there's only one name by which we are saved. When that is taken away from us, darkness, darkness, great grave darkness is going to arise upon this earth. And I saw people as apologists rising up to say, no, that is not true. Jesus was alive. Jesus was real. How pitiful are we if he did not die and rise to life? All of our faith, the entire Christianity hangs upon the fact that he was crucified three days in the grave and then he rose. He was seen by many witnesses and he ascended to heaven in public, promising that he will come again because he will go to prepare a kingdom for those who trust in him. That whole thing, the whole thing will be called a myth, a figment. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord that people do not prepare themselves for. You're busy with earthly things. You're busy with bills and you're busy with things of this earth, forgetting that inside the body that is working to pay bills is a soul that doesn't even understand about bills, but that soul understands eternal matters, heaven, hell, heaven, hell. 
That's what the soul understands. That's what the spirit understands. Where will you go forever, for eternity? Eternity means beyond your comprehension. A time span that you cannot conceive of. You're, you're busy with earthly things. And as a result, you are not working on the eternal things. You are not working on the eternal matters of where is your soul going. You're living carnally. You're living in the flesh. You're living for the moment. You live to take care of your appearance. You live to take care of your appetite. The more expensive the plate of food, the more interested you are. You're a foodie. That's where you, that's what God says. You lay up your treasures where the moths and the rust are going to destroy it. You put your focus, your physical well-being, your physical strength. That's where you put your focus. You want to extend, you want to extend your life here on this earth for as long as possible. But where your soul will go for eternity, which is longer than your human lifespan, you don't care. He says you sold to futility. The world, the people in the church sold to futility. You talk futility. Your conversations are so shallow. You confuse your natural life with your spiritual life. 90%, up to 97% some people on the natural world, zero investment in the kingdom. And now the time has come to test. The time has come to test you now. The time is here to test what you did. The time is here. We've been talking on this line about the changes that are coming. We have been on this line. We've been praying. We've been seeking God. We've been breaking out sometimes into unbelievable cries for mercy, strange cries for mercy, begging God for mercy in the last call that we had. And what was the mercy for? God, please don't let the prophecy happen. No, the spirit that cries out, Abba, Father, the spirit was cry crying out to God, prepare us for what is coming. Please, Lord, don't let us fail the test. That was our cry on this line. Lord God, as you are merciful and as you live in heaven above, don't let us fail the test. It is the hour of testing now. Now we will see, now we will see who built with hay, wood, straw, and who built with silver and gold and precious stones. Because that's one thing fire will do. Fire will eat up hay because it's grass. It will eat up wood because it is a flammable material. It will eat up straw because it's also grass. But precious gems, silver and gold, when you put them into fire, you can't destroy them. You can only refine them. Many will be refined by fire and many will be made white. To be made white means that you are now made into a purest material. But according to how Daniel used it, it also means that you will be refined right out of this earth. You will be refined right out of your natural body. You will leave this earth through an incident. You will leave this earth through an accident. You will leave this earth through some kind of spiritual promotion that will include you having to walk through the door of death. Many will be refined in this fi final hour. Many will be made white. Your family will say they don't understand how it happened, but the heavenly father above, he understands. It's not because you are unrighteous. It's because you have been made white. You have been refined. You have been purged. You have been purified. All the dross has been taken care out of you. And now you will enter through the door of the sheep forevermore and await the coming of your Lord on the other side. It's not everybody. That's the mistake people made. That's the mistake people make even to this day. Because the Bible says we will not all sleep. So everyone assumes I'm not going to sleep. It's a very wrong assumption. This earth will be made very empty. I've spoken it many times before. There will hardly be anyone here. The kind of pressing that is coming is a terrible pressing. Have you ever seen olives? Have you ever seen grapes go through the press and all of them come out and they're still round? They come out a pulpy tangled mess. This beast is the iron kingdom. And the Bible tells us very clearly through the mouth of Daniel, the prophet, that the fourth beast was more terrible than all the beasts. This final kingdom coming that people take so lightly. They joke about everything, a mocking, scoffing generation that is headed to hellfire without knowing it. The Bible says of the fourth beast, 
that it was more terrible than all the others. This is in Daniel chapter 7, and it says that beast will trample the residue with its feet. Will trample. This means to step on and crush the residue with its feet. And people think that this is something that they can handle with Bible studies on TV and Bible podcasts. And what are your thoughts on this and this? That's how people are preparing towards the fourth kingdom. That's how man thinks that he will prepare towards the fourth kingdom. And so it is. And so it is. A sweeping is coming in this earth. You that remain, you that are alive and remain, when you see Jesus, you will understand what I was doing here. When you finally see him through what you pass through, because the Bible also speaks of the Bible also speaks of the fact that during this time this this thing that as you listen to me you are filled with fear what if it's me what if it's me it will be all ages it will be babies the baby will come and leave you won't even get a chance to name that baby hear the word of the Lord 9 months of effort 9 months of sweat Nine months of preparing. The nursery is ready. The clothes are there. You're the kind of couple that say you want God to name the baby. The baby will come and depart before you even pick a name. Unexplained circumstances. A difficult birth. An unsuccessful pregnancy. It will be all, all ages. Because the sickle is in the earth. The sickle is in the earth. The earth is being harvested of her crop. And it's a bad crop. It's not a good year for harvesting. It's not a good era for harvesting. The corn is blighted. The corn, I'm looking at it. All the ears look like the ears that Pharaoh had in his bad dream. The ears of corn on the earth. Never wanted to know who Jesus is. Arrogant and proud. Apologist for Satan. If there was a God, there wouldn't be rape. There's rape because the rapists are here on earth with us. If there was a God, there wouldn't be famine. There's famine because wicked people have cornered the market on food. They sell it at a premium in the developed nations and they starve the developing nations. That's the work of man. God has nothing to do with that. You can't be so hypocritical you can't insist that you understand that man has free will and then complain that all the sins of man are god's fault it's either you want to have free will and that means the wicked including all men have free will to sin and do what they want or you want god to be a dictator no free will if god is a di dictator then the world is perfect because if god forces us to do what only god wants there can be no sin because there's no darkness in him or shadow of turning. He is better and brighter than the sun at its zenith. Apologists for wicked. Wickedness. Supporters of sin. Sympathizers of sin. That nevertheless want to hold God accountable for their deeds. Imagine. Men do the rape. And then the apologist will say, why is there rape if, if God is good? If God is good. God is always good. Men are never good. Any goodness in us comes from God. The harvest is dead on the vine, dead on the stalk. It's black. And people think, no, we will get, we will get another season for rain. We will get another season for sun. God is good. God is good. God is good. Yes, he's good, and the end times are still going to happen. He's good, and the sickle will still be put in because the time to reap the harvest has come. God is not moved because the harvest is bad. It will still be reaped, and whatever wheat is still good, it will be put into its bundle and given the reward of the righteous. And even if it's 10 billion bundles to one good bundle, the 10 billion bundles, the Bible tells us clearly, will be put into the fire. 
Whoever will cleanse himself of unrighteousness, cleanse yourself of unrighteousness. Put away your filthy garments. This is what God is saying. Put away your lust for evil. Put away your desire for darkness. Desire earnestly the higher things. Desire to be washed of the Lord. People think there will be another season. I've got another chance. You will be taken away in the midst of your sin. You will be taken away in the midst of your evil. Calamity will come upon you like a whirlwind, just like I saw it coming upon the pastors. They didn't have any warning. The government is going to do things overnight, overnight. The governments of the world are going to mandate things overnight. You will go to sleep, it will be like this. The next morning you wake up, it will be like that. Absolutely no conversation. Absolutely no warning. You wake up, it's a different situation. You wake up, it's a new reality. You wake up, it's the law. Those pastors will not get warnings. Christian podcasters, you will not get warning. You will not be told that the era has changed. It will be like a mass raid and they already know who is who. Have I not already said that God knows the real from the false? All these fake pastors, all these false prophets that you love so much, let them question them and ask them who is Jesus Christ. They will say, I've never heard that name in my life. I've never, I've never heard that name in my life. They'll show them their videos. They will say, I think that's a deep fake AI. That's not me. Someone is trying to, someone is accusing me falsely. Someone is trying to get me killed. They will deny Jesus. You love hirelings. You love false prophets. You love fake miracles. Satan is coming to show you the raising of the dead. He's coming to show you the opening of blind eyes by another power. By a demonic sign, eyes will be open. The lame will walk by the power of Beelzebub. And unless the Holy Spirit talks to you, you will not know the difference and you will follow after that. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 8 to 12. That the coming of the lawless one will be with all power, miraculous signs and wonders but it will be coming from a dirty and defiled and devious source. But those who love signs will follow after the signs, believing them to be of the Lord. Just like the Pied Piper led the unwise children away. That's how it will be. A loss of freedom, a loss of self-governance, a loss of the right to express yourself. God says, be still my people. The Lord says, be still my people. Be very still. Hide yourself from the wrath that is coming upon the hour of testing. The hour of testing has come to try the whole earth. The whole earth, no one will be exempt. From the babies to the elderly. From the babies to the elderly. When you see your five-year-old fighting for his life against some disease that the doctor has never seen before, that is when you will humble your proud self and go down on your knees and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You will find faith because you know, <laughs> you will know that you call upon Jesus or you will bury that child. The price of wood is going to go up. Wood is going to become expensive because of funerals. And another thing the Lord told me a few days ago he told me, Celestial, tell them that those who die now are the lucky ones because they will still get funerals. I never hold anything back. I never hold anything back. If the Lord tells me to speak it, I will speak it. He told me here in America that those who die early, tell them that those who die in the beginning are the lucky ones. They are blessed. They will get funerals. They will get a proper send off. They will get the family member. They will get um, the reception afterwards. They will get the grieving. They will get a decent burial. They will get a plot because after that, people will just lay on the road. Animal food, flies. What is the cause? Why, sh why should any man deceive you? Why should any man deceive you? Why should any man tell you a partial truth? 
Why should any man cry unto you? Peace, peace. The Lord says it, it, it is peace. God says he has no peace with you. You are not a peaceful people. You are not a people who have peace with heaven. You have no peace with God. Those who die first will be blessed. God says honor and dignity will be your portion. You will get the memoriam. You will get the funeral announcement. Because after that, destruction will come. People will be walking and it will just come the time. It is the end of your life. You don't have strength. You don't have strength anymore. You haven't eaten in such a long time. America will be such a bleak landscape. Nothing will want to grow here. This is the problem with the people that I'm sent to. This is the problem with the people that I'm faced with. They think their limitation is my limitation. They think because they can't hear God that I can't hear God. They think that because they can't believe God, I can't believe God. And yet I'm seeing a person walking so tired. He hasn't eaten anything in such a long time that now the body says, I've done the best that I can. I cannot take another step. The place that you fall to the earth, you will, you will. We've seen all the images of people dying in past famines. The media hasn't held it back. Western media has not held back the suffering of other nations. Western media has filmed children dying and starving to death in the Horn of Africa. Western media has brought the pictures here of infants whose skin is stapled to the bone and you can see the child taking their last breaths in the mother's arm, in the mother's arm in a UNICEF camp. Shallow breathing that dictates it's over now. It's just a few more minutes. That is what I see a tall American man doing, walking on a road that just seems to go nowhere. The landscape is messed up on both sides of him, just devastated landscape on both sides of him, walking on a road and he reaches a point where whatever his destination was, he's not going to reach it because he lacks the physical strength to continue and he sinks down on the road and where he sinks, he will lie. Later, a buzzard will come for that body. You have been told these things, but you continue to deny that the Lord is true. You continue to deny that the Lord is speaking. As in, who can create this for you? Who can imagine such an ending in this modern world, in a country that does not lack food, in a country that wastes food, in a country that takes pictures of food for social media? Who can ever say this? And yet God says, this is where you will come. No food. No food until you consume one another, until you eat people, until you eat human flesh. And those who would have passed on before this are those who will now die in dignity. They will be safe in a grave. No one will eat anyone who was buried in 2018. That person is safe. He's locked up under six feet of dirt and then a big slab of concrete. No one's breaking into that to eat anyone who died in 2022 or January 2024. But after, when you fall, you will be fair game for man and for animal. Before you fall, cannibalism will be seen. Gangs will be roaming in this country, attacking people who are weak for the sake of food. Satan will enter into people and they will eat each other in this country. You're listening to this on your iPad. You're listening to this on your fancy phone. Your phone is so modern. Your laptop is so modern. Your cell phone is so modern. That's what makes you think that it can never happen because you have electricity, you have gas, you have banks, you have social security, you have a government that always assures you that everything is all right. God is speaking to you from the future. God is speaking to you from the time when the government loses the ability to provide gas. Oil and gas will fail in this country. They will move to some other type of fuel. It's not a lie when they say they're going to go green. They're just not telling you that green is fallen angel power. Fallen angel, external, off-world source. It's an off-world source of power. It's some kind of mineral, some kind of luminous, glowing thing 
something something that if it's not ca carefully handled you'll get instant cancer instant cancer if you're exposed to that thing but it can power an entire building all the dishwashers all the everything it can power the whole building one tiny small piece of that thing embedded into the foundation of the building that's what they mean green you think you're so intelligent this is the problem because you cannot see you imagine that all are blind and that all cannot see they're pretending this climate shift green power you see them try to use electric power and it fails it fails because they're not intending to use what they're trying to debut in front of you now they don't intend to run these cars they don't intend to run these cars on electricity they don't intend to run this world on windmill power it's a stopgap it's something to prepare us for the fact that they don't want to use oil and gas anymore because the masters they work for don't like the outcome the word is fossil fuels i think that's what coal is they don't like the outcome of fossil fuels they don't like the scent of that of that thing burning they think we're so primitive. They think that we're below monkeys. Imagine thinking you're so educated. Harvard, MIT, Stanford, Princeton, all the tons. Imagine valuing yourself according to an, to an education that is in itself a lie. It's posturing. And at the same time, you're at the mercy of creatures that have existed forever. They have existed for so long, for so long with Lucifer, the eldest angel brother at the head. It would have been better for humanity if any other angel fell except the one who was chosen to cover the throne of God. It would have been better if the second in command had fallen, the third in command, but because the first in command fell. The wickedness will be off the charts when he gets here. They're going to power the world with external sources. They're going to power the world according to what he wants, according to what they want. They're going to remodel everything. When they say it's going to go green, they literally mean that plants will be happy because they won't be struggling with fossil fuels. They won't be struggling with any of the things that we need to burn and make smoke and use up so much energy and do combustion and things like that. They're going to power it with water, ocean water, seawater, things that we can't seem to make it work now. We can't make it work now because the missing pieces to the puzzle have not been approved for global use. They have not been approved yet for them to come out and lie and say, we discovered this. These people are not discovering anything. They are literally being told, move to stage five, move to stage six, move to stage seven. As the people can take it, as they can take it, move to the next stage as they can bear it. When they come and say, put a pig's heart in a man. They do it with one man and then they put it in the paper. It's a litmus test. It's to see if we will accept a pig, a pig's heart beating in a human man. And they're never disappointed because many are those among us who say, it saved a life. It saved his life. It's technology. It's innovation. We need to stop being so religious. If it's better for society, I think we should accept it. The puppet masters of this planet are never disappointed by the response of the inhabitants of the planet because the inhabitants of the planet are almost to a man, godless. The light of Christ is not in our hearts and that's why everything is acceptable to us. And all they need to know, all they need to do is bump us up to the next notch and the next notch we will accept our bars and our cages and eventually our own destruction we will participate in our own annihilation we will become the gatekeepers of our own demise 
we will march ourselves into hell because of who we are and because we reject God. The nations will be turned into hell, into hell, a hellish place to live and those who forget God. Who forgets God? You are already destroyed. You're already destroyed. Though you yet live, you are dead if you reject God. Lord, we give you the glory. We give you the honor and we give you the praise. We acknowledge that you are king in our midst and there is nothing good in us, Lord, except whatever we can find in ourselves to humble and to surrender to you. There's nothing good in us. There's only darkness and ashes. No man can be good without the light of Jesus Christ, to light his way, to light his path. You leave us alone for a minute, Lord, we would stumble and be off into darkness, embracing darkness, defending darkness. That is who we are. Before you came, we were in darkness. You are the light. You are the truth. You are the way. You are the life of men. You are the light that shines in the darkness and the darkness will not understand it. And it is only those who are willing to cleave to you in this time, only those who are willing to find the time to serve God. It's only those who are willing to make the sacrifice to serve God. Those are the only people. You that the Lord will set a mark upon your forehead and mark you as his. Go throughout the city, Ezekiel 9 a passage preached here for years. Go throughout the city and mark those on the forehead who moan and cry and lament over the evils that are done in the city. But what do we see? When the abortion laws are expanded in the cities, then people go outside and they say, my body, my choice. They rejoice. When death is legalized, then we celebrate and we send a portion to one another. When access to murder becomes more widespread, then we rejoice. When the gender lines are blurred, when the same-sex marriage is legalized, then we celebrate. Then we say we call it progress. We call death and destruction progress. May the Lord have mercy on every soul. Every soul who does not take a shallow approach to salvation. May the Lord have mercy. Ezekiel 9, go throughout the city and put a mark upon the head of every man who sighs and laments. That means that this is not a false appreciation of evil. To sigh, to lament, it means your heart is genuinely broken when you see sin. Your heart is genuinely broken when you see how people mock and scoff when the word of God comes forth, how they laugh, how they say, who can prophesy every day? Because they hear God once a year, so they think everybody is like that. Mark the false prophets, God is saying. I will take them away like a whirlwind. You will hear the news of them. Suddenly, a sudden announcement, mark the false prophets. They will be taken away suddenly out of your midst. Suddenly, and their place will remember them no more. You will look where they used to be and you will see nothing where they were standing. Because you love deception. You love those who tell you that you will see no dark days, Babylon. You love those who mislead you. You love those who fill you with false hope. They tell you to put your trust in men. They tell you to put your trust in the economy. They tell you and teach you to put your trust in anything except me. They corrupt your faith. 2 Peter and chapter 2. 2 Peter and chapter 2. Their destruction will not linger anymore 
the destruction of every false prophet in the United States will not linger anymore. You that takes up a burden that the Lord has not set on you. For the word of God says, the burden that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw, the burden that Ezekiel saw, the burden that Hezekiah, not Hezekiah, but the burden that Haggai saw, The prophet's vision is called his burden. And the reason it is called his burden is because when it is true, it's never pleasant. It's always cutting. It's so sour. It's astringent. It's like pouring lime on a snail. It will get all the slime out of a snail. The burden, a true prophet, the burden that he receives is astringent. And astringent is cleansing. It will purge filth out of the people. But the false prophet will bring you a vision, a false hope. The false prophet will stir you up. The false prophet will tune you like a radio to every station where they play your greatest hits. That's why you love them. They excite you to comfort. They cause you to clap your hands in the arena. This is what God is saying. You clap your hands. You have so much to celebrate, America. And yet, you are on your way to your demise. You are on your way to a funeral. You are on your way to your destruction. And the sound that is taking you there is the sound of applause because you are deceived by the false prophets. They have lied to you. God says this people has inherited a lie, a generation that has been led astray, an entire generation. That means from age 70 on down, if you are 70 years old in this nation or younger, you have received a lie as your version of Christianity. An almost totally lost generation. An almost a total wipeout of a generation sold to lies. Told to false prophets that kept building you up to higher and higher and higher expectations. God says, Babylon, you exalt yourself to the clouds. You will come down like lightning from heaven. Your fall will be so sudden. It will leave your contemporaries in horror. A contemporary is someone who's at the same level as you. This is the Australians. This is the Canadians. You guys all hang out at the same fancy dinners talking about whatever you talk about. God says your contemporaries will cover their mouths in shock. They will place both their hands upon their heads. I'm seeing them. These statesmen are usually so well-possessed. Korea and Japan. Everyone's decked out in the finest. God says a sudden blow will be struck to the United States. A sucker punch. Pow. You will go down. You're not expecting it. You don't think anything of it because you've been told nothing but glory. Nothing but glory. Only glory for you, only bright days. I am a queen, I will see no dark days. I am a queen and I am no widow. God says the armed forces will be in the streets, first alive and then dead. The war machine of the United States, in the streets of the United States, first alive, and then dead. The same government that tramples the people, the same army that tramples the people will in their turn be trampled. No one will bury these service men and women. No one will say thank you for your service. No one will say anything. Bow down, bow down Babylon. Seat yourself in the dust. God says, this is the vengefulness of his wrath upon your pride for thinking that you could exalt yourself to the heavens. This is the return that you have earned yourself. Wrath in exchange for pride. To those that lament, you lament and you sigh. You're truly moved. You can truly see the sins of this country. You've decided to stop being bamboozled. You've decided to stop making excuses. You've decided to stop saying, yes, but it's not so bad. 
You've decided to stop saying, but we're not the only one. We're not the only one. The whole world is going to be judged. The whole world is going to watch you be judged first. You're the main event. You're the keynote speaker. You're the first thing that's on the agenda. The fall of the United States, chapter one. Whatever anyone else gets, you're going first. A world war is coming and that's where you're going to get played. That's where you're going to get outfoxed. These nations are going to do you worse than what Hitler did to Europe. It's a, it's a fox trap. It's a hole that doesn't have an exit. It's a hole where Mr. Fox forgot to dig a way out. He forgot to dig two or three tunnels so that if one got blocked, he could go out one of the other two. It's a trap. A world war is coming, America. You're going to be in the middle of it and they're going to get you there. That's where they're going to get you. You're going to involve yourself one too many times. God says you can't stay home. You literally, I see something like a woman who's a busybody. She's always packing her little basket of things and then going to the neighbor's house. Oh, I'm just checking in on you. I just came to see how's everything. The neighborhood busybody can't keep in her property, can't stay in her yard. Here, there, and there, here. God says this wandering spirit that you have, they're going to sit you down very hard. America is going to be sat down so hard that her pelvic bone will break, her spinal cord will break. You will never stand up again. You will never stand up again against me or against anyone else. You will never stand up in defiance against me, the Lord. You will never raise your fist toward me again in defiance. They have already manipulated you. They have already laid the stage. The trap is set and you are walking into it in perfect step. A global war. And guess what? You are the main event and you do not know. You don't know it. The Lord says, I will shelter my people. But that is it. That is it. It's the barest minimum sheltering. So hear and be wise. It is the barest minimum sheltering. The Lord speaks to you, you move. The Lord tells you, sell it and move. You begin to do the process. The Lord says, give it up. Stop fighting for it. Leave it. Let them have it. Let it go. I'll get you your own. Don't continue fighting for it. If he tells you to let it go, let it go. Don't fight for it and get your hand cut off. Don't fight for it and keep your hand on it when there's a blade coming. You'll get your hand cut off. You're going to go into the end times with one hand. That's what happens to people who can't listen. You'll go into the end times with one leg. Spiritually, you will go into the end times limping. You will go into the end times with a lesson you'll never forget. When he says, leave it, you leave it. If he says, pursue, then pursue by all means. Pursue and don't have mercy. Pursue until you catch it. Pursue until you get it done. But if he says, stay your hand, then you stay your hand. The Lord tells you to strike three blows, you strike five. The two extra that you strike, he will strike them back on you because you don't listen. You go above and beyond when you receive a message. You receive a message to say A, B, C, you take it to A, B, C, D, Z. You add extra into the message. You corrupt the message. You want to make it more exciting. You want to make it more interesting. The prophecy is only two minutes long, but you want to make it 15 minutes long because you need the ad support on your channel. Woe is you. Woe is you if you stand up to speak when you've not been told to speak. You will get struck out of the earth like a powerful bolt of lightning from nowhere. I'm telling you the grief that's going to be on this YouTube, the grief, the shock that is going to be in this YouTube community. Your favorite creators are going to be put in their graves. 
across all spectrums. This is music. This is movies. This is live streamers. The people who wear headsets all day and play games. The people who receive endorsements to, to showcase the blender. The pe they have sin in their lives. They have so much sin in their lives. But they're the people you're listening to. They're the musicians that you're following. They're the movie stars that you love. They're the politicians that you've been voting for block after block after block. Meeting after me meeting. Season after season. Election after election. Funerals galore. America, you will have a big hole in your heart from grief. Whatever you love. Think on the thing that you love inordinately. Inordinate affection. Loving something that you're not supposed to love. Loving something more than God. You give it more time than God. You believe in it more than God. And you think he will count you innocent. You will have a gaping hole in your heart because you would not separate from the things that you love. The things that were stealing your time from God. If you go over and above what God gives you, if you go over and above what you're told to do, you will get punished for it. For some, it will be simply a stroke, not a stroke as in paralyzing stroke. It will be the kind of stroke that you strike your child when they're young and they will not listen and they've been doing something again and again and again, that sharp smack to bring you back to order. And the child is always shocked, shocked tears. You struck me, God? Yes, because I discipline every son that I love. Whom will not sub submit to the discipline? You are a bastard. You have no part in me. If you will not submit to my discipline, I do not know you. It will be a sharp rebuke. Some people, God loves you so much. He's not above rebuking you to save your soul. I see for some people, all the Lord will do is speak a verbal rebuke. He will rebuke you verbally. You won't go through any kind of really painful, shaking shock. But some people, let me put it simply, you're going to get your world rocked. God is going to shake your life like a snow globe. Everything in your life that is not firmly rooted in the cross, it's going to go flying left. You'll be two weeks from that marriage and that useless person that you were planning to spend the rest of your life with, he's going to call it off and walk off. I'm devastated. I'm devastated. Cry it out. Cry it out because he's not going to come back. God is going to blow him out of your life like a, what's the big thing that just goes in the desert? The tumbleweed, like a tumbleweed. God will knock these evil men out of your life like a tumbleweed. You're going to go back to stage one. You're going to go back to how to find a man the right way, lesson 101. Basics in choosing a spouse, male and female. You're going to go back to the baseline. God warned us in 2002 that if you don't live up to the test, if you can't live up to the righteous standard of God, you're going to be sent to the back of the line. You're going to have to start this whole thing all over again. You're going to start reading your Bible from Genesis. You're going to start really learning what's in the Bible. You think you know what's in the Bible, but you don't. You have a crude version of Christianity. You have a crude apprehension, very raw, very jumbled up, very confused. You've picked up lies from everywhere and then you think that's Christianity. God is going to send you back to baseline. You're going to go back to the baseline, starting over from scratch. You won't even get to keep the apartment. You won't even keep the house. He's going to take it all from you. When you are humble, you will become a very righteous man. You're not righteous now because you have cologne, you have suits, you have a car, you have women, you have everything. But God knows inside you is the core, the soul of a righteous man. He's going to strip you to nothing. And guess what? The girlies won't like you when you're broke. They won't like you when you're poor. God will have all your free time when you lose it all. You're going to lose everything like that. It will be like when they end filming a scene in Hollywood cut the fake life of John it's a wrap God will humble you you'll get food to eat and a place to sleep who knows where a kind friend will let you stay for a few weeks and then another kind friend you'll be bouncing around you won't have much you will learn to pray through the things that you suffer Jesus learned humility by the things that he suffered and imagine he was perfect in all things without sin and he still suffered.
So who are you? He will take it all away from you. You will be stripped down to the core of who you are. And when you get down to the core of who you are, you will find that it's not the person you've been living as all along. You're somebody different, somebody righteous. You're somebody very bright. You're a star in the kingdom, but right now you're a puddle of mud. You're a puddle of mud. And God is going to get a very powerful hose and he's going to flush you through. I see a big pothole, massive pothole. You wouldn't want to drive through that pothole. Even if you had a Jeep Wrangler, you wouldn't go, want to go through a pothole like that. You're going to need Hummer tires to get through a pothole like that. And in the center of the pothole, a diamond ring. God is going to take a powerful high pressure hose. And you know what's running through that? The water of the word of God. When nobody's inviting you to dinner anymore, you'll be reading the book of John with no problem. You won't have money to spend. No more money to go hang out. You'll be glad to have a place to lay your head. You will change. God says, I'm going to drag you into righteousness since you refused to walk into it when I gave you an opportunity. I gave you an opportunity to walk into it on your two legs, but you thought you had time. I'm going to drag you into righteousness so that I can by all means save some of you. You're going to lose everything. You have never been so poor as you're about to be poor. He will take all of it away from you, publicly humble you. The way people are going to talk about you it's going to make you sweat bullets. The embarrassment. I'm telling you, I feel a prickly feeling as if I'm on fire with shame. God is going to shame some people to get them to humble themselves and bow their knees. When you lose your investment portfolio, when you lose everything, your wife is just going to be looking at you because she told you. But who is she? She's just your wife. She's nothing. Why should you listen to her? You're the man. You know everything. You won't even have a hanky to cry into it. You will cry into your hands. You will cry into your bare hands, movie style. And then you'll be starting over from scratch. And if you're blessed, that woman won't leave you. She'll stick by you. She said it for better or for worse. If you're blessed, if you're lucky, she won't leave you because you are the author of your own destruction. When she tried to warn you, when others tried to warn you, you knew better. I know how to play the market. I'm good at this. I went to Yale and Harvard. You'll be broke. You'll sell those suits. You'll go on these secondhand sites. You'll go on these secondhand exchange sites to sell all your suits for a little money. Who doesn't want to walk into the kingdom on your two feet? You will get dragged. Your feet will leave furrows in the, in the ground like a cartoon you will get dragged into righteousness. Since you can't walk into it like the rest of us, you will get dragged into it because he's doing it to save your soul. He's doing it because the alternative is to destroy you. And he's not wicked. He doesn't want to destroy you. He loves you. For God so loved the world. It's a famous verse, right? For God so loved the world. Love takes all forms in the end times. He's going to warn you. And if you can't take the warning, you're going to get the belt. You're going to get the discipline. Because he disciplines, he chastises every son that he loves. And all discipline seems, it does not seem pleasant for the time that we're receiving it. But to those who have been trained by it, my, my, they come out true sons of God's righteousness. They come out and they're a different person. The Lord is going, he's in his remodeling era since everybody's in an era. God is in his remodeling era He's going to bust down the houses and build them up brick by brick. Don't be built of wood. Don't be built of hay. Don't be found being built of straw because we're going into the fire where we will be tested. It's very good to be built of brick. Do you know why? Bricks do well in the fire. Bricks were created in the fire. So when you put them back in there, they're comfortable, they're okay. Call me Shadrach, call me Meshach, call me Abednego. In the fire, we do well. The Lord bless you. People of God, the Lord bless you. Heed the words of the Lord. 
Do not be like the horse. Do not be like the mule who, unless you, you chase after them and you control them with the bit and the bridle, they will not come near you. You can't leave them to their own devices. They run wild. You have to control them with the bit and bridle. Don't be like that. Be a trained horse that the Lord can say, stay in this meadow and eat until I come for you. Then you don't go running into the other meadows because they told you, see here, he's in the desert. See here, this is happening. Be a trained horse. Learn to be a trained horse. Train yourselves. Train yourselves. Train your children. There's no discipline. Train yourselves to be obedient Christians. That's the first badge of a Christian. We are obedient to the word of the Lord. We are obedient to the voice of the Lord. My sheep hear my voice and they know me. They will not follow after strangers. They will not follow after strange voices just because the voice is available on the internet. Train yourselves. Train yourselves or you're going to get trained. That is guaranteed. The end time is a training time. School is in session. It always has been. The wise have taken out their notebooks and their pens and the fools are standing around in the schoolyard, mocking still. They haven't heard the first bell. They haven't heard the second bell. They didn't hear the third bell, which is a warning that anybody coming into class after the third bell gets detention. Obedient children went into the schoolyard at the first bell. The hard-headed rascals went into the school at the second bell, but the absolute stone-hearted mockers and scoffers stayed in the schoolyard even after the third bell. And so the principal is now going to come to the schoolyard and handle them himself. God bless you. God bless you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that no time that we ever spend in your presence is wasted. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that out of the depths of your wisdom, your Holy Spirit takes of all things that belong to you and makes it known to us because you have love for us, God, and you desire to save us. You desire to give us wisdom and you desire to teach us how to walk circumspect before you, redeeming the time because the days are evil. The days are being shortened for the sake of the elect, but that doesn't mean that a short day is a good day, Lord. Short day doesn't mean good day. And so we need to learn to move with wisdom because the times are evil and there are people who will put a premium on the soul of a Christian. They will offer rewards for Christians, Lord. We have to be mature enough to know this and to begin to prepare ourselves to be undetectable. If it is your will for us to be detected, then yes, Lord, so be it, your will be done. But if it is your will for us to live wise as serpents and yet stay pure as doves, then how can we do any less? How can we live arrogantly as if the sun will always be shining, Lord? Give us grace. Give us grace that we don't destroy ourselves because of pride. I commit this people to you. They have heard the word of the Lord. They have heard it in full. It has not been amended. It has not been held back. It is coming forth live as we have come before you for prayer and we weren't even able to utter a word of prayer. As soon as we gave the opening greeting, they started to hear the live prayer call. Thank you, Lord. You have never failed anyone who trusted in you. And though the harvest is blighted, I thank you that if there is any corn out there that you can save, then I commit them to your keeping. I put your people in your hand and I seal them by the blood of Jesus Christ. That is the first and most powerful offensive weapon of the believer. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over the young ones. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over the teenagers. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over the working population. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ of those transitioning into retirement. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over those who are old, over those who are infirm, over those who are battling powers and principalities who have exalted themselves against the people of God. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against every contrary force that has come into the home every ill wind that bodes evil for your people. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against the wicked that lie in wait for the souls of the righteous 
They have set their arrows on a string, O God. They lay in wait. They say, who will deliver these people from our hand? But I thank you, Lord, that you are seated on high. You mock at the wicked. You laugh at those who rage against you. They do not know that your names are mighty, O God. You are mighty. Every word that proceeds from your lips is pure. You are a holy God. We must learn to accept who you are as ruler above us. My Father, have mercy on us. Don't allow our souls to be prey for the wicked. Preserve us and fill us with the light of truth. Don't abandon us, Lord. You have never failed, O oh Lord. You will never abandon your people, Father. You will never walk away from us. You are with us, Lord. You have promised us even unto the end of the age. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Your name is light in this dark world. Enlighten our eyes, O God, lest we sleep the sleep of death. Open our eyes. Show us the lateness of the hour. Break the power of fear over us, almighty God. Shake us from our slumber. Help us to put on the full armor of God. Help us to get ready for what is ahead of us. The great shift that is coming. The great shift that is at the door. Everything changing in a moment by a single announcement. A single announcement will be made. One announcement that will change everything. You'll always remember where you were when you hear that announcement. Thus saith the Lord. You will remember it for the remainder of your life, however long or short that may be. When you hear that announcement, it's going to change everything. And then you will know that the word of the Lord that you had heard for the last five years was always true. Defend this ministry, Lord. Defend your work that you raised up. I give you thanks for everything. In lack, in sickness, in health, we give you thanks for everything. When we are provided for and when we struggle, we give you thanks, Lord. We praise you, we worship you. We set the blood at the doors of this nation that who is of God will be preserved through all things. Thank you, God. You are very good, and we delight in you and the knowledge of you always. In the name of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, the only name, the only name among men by which we can be saved. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.